Welcome back to Minimal Movement, the series where I try to complete games while pressing the least amount of buttons possible. For this video, we're going to be playing Super Mario 64, and this game is quite different from the other games we've played in the previous Minimal Movement videos, mainly because this is a 3D game and we have a lot more space to actually move around in. However, the more movement might actually be a bad thing for us. The rules for this challenge are pretty simple. Anytime we press a physically pressable button, I will add a point to our counter. Our controller has a few buttons, and the main ones we're going to be focusing on are A and B, since the joystick is not a button. The C buttons can also change the camera angle, but in Mario 3D All-Stars for the Nintendo Switch, you can actually just use the right stick to move your camera, so they are perfectly fine to use, however I will still not be using them, and I guess that's just to make this challenge more authentic. I guess. Also as a little side note, some of the gameplay is tool assisted courtesy of Pan and Coek 2012, and this gameplay will be labeled whenever it comes up. It'll also use the camera buttons, but as I said earlier, the camera buttons are okay to use. I'm just not going to use them. You might feel disappointed that some of these stars are going to be artificially obtained, but trust me when I say that, some of these stars are humanly impossible to collect. Also, I should probably add that this is a 70 star run, and I will not be using the backwards long jump simply because it is not in the Shindo version of the game, which just so happens to be the version that's used on the Nintendo Switch. I'm also going to be using the Japanese version of the game because I'm pretty sure we'll have less text boxes to press. Anyways, with all that out of the way, we can finally start this challenge. The menu already has a block for us to surpass, since Mario was clearly saying PRESS START TO PLAY! We have no choice but to press the start button, so this is going to be our first button press. But this isn't any normal button press. This is a menu button press, and we'll be putting this into a different category from our gameplay button presses. Menu button presses includes text options, star selection, and of course the main menu. We will combine our two types of button presses at the end of the video, but for now we're going to have them separate just to keep it more organized. After pressing start, we'll have to press A to pick our new file. And after going through the intro cutscene, we'll have to face off against three text boxes. After these text boxes, we unfortunately have to talk to the Lakitu camping the main bridge. Bridge. However, there might be a way to skip this Lakitu by long jumping on the very edge of the bridge. This takes 3 button presses, but the Lakitu text boxes would have taken 5 menu presses, so it's clearly a better trade. But wait, there might just be a way to get past without pressing any buttons at all. Since Lakitu doesn't show up if you're on the very edge of this bridge, we can actually tiptoe our way to the castle door by carefully staying on the edge of this bridge. After walking through the entrance doors, we get greeted by another text box which costs one more menu press. Inside the castle, we can see some doors, and for now the only door we can really use to progress is the door going to bob -Omb Battlefield. And since we have to jump to get inside one of the paintings, we'll have to use our first gameplay button press to Enter. We will also need to press A on the star selection screen. I'll add one press for gameplay and menu presses every time we select a star so I don't have to explain it every time. bob -Omb Battlefield gives us three text boxes when we enter the level for the first time, and our first task is to battle against King bob -Omb. and he is all the way on the top of this hill which was actually quite easy to climb. Once we reach King bob -Omb, we have to talk to him and that costs three button presses, and the fight will cost a minimum of three button presses since you'll need to grab him a few times. This clearly isn't looking good for us so far, but we do have more than one option to try out here. We can try the Chain Chomp Star or the Floating Island Star. The Chain Chomp Star will cost us 5 button presses minimum because we can use a bob -omb to clip through the cage, and the Floating Island Star will also cost 5 button presses because it takes 3 buttons to reach the island and 2 to grab the star from the box. But I think I might be able to reach the island in 2 button presses instead of 3. Normally you'd use one long jump to gain enough speed to reach the island, and then long jump a second time to actually make it on the island, but what if we were able to just barely gain enough speed before using the long jump that gets to the island? I wondered if we can gain enough speed by walking off the edge of this battlefield and long jumping at the edge of the mountain, and after probably 6 hours of retrying this jump, I just barely made it to the island in only 2 button presses. We can now grab the star using 2 more button presses. After completing this level, we'll need to save our game which costs 1 menu press. 
and I'll add this to our counter every time we get a star. We also need to get past these three text boxes telling us that we can unlock a new area in the castle. This new area that contains Womp's fortress can be unlocked with one menu press because they throw a text box at us. The first star I wanted to grab was shoot into the wild blue, and for this one we can walk over to this teleport spot. After we've been teleported, we can slide onto this slanted wall to reach the second floor of this platform. We can grab the star by walking off the edge using zero button presses. I also went for blast away the wall, and I was actually able to do cannonless for the first time ever. Zero button presses. I couldn't think of any other stars to grab for Womp's Fortress, so I decided to head towards Cool Cool Mountain to play Slip Sliding Away. This level starts off with us needing to climb up this hill, and then drop into this chimney. This chimney brings us to this slide, and we can skip pretty much the entire thing by just falling down. After we leave this slide area, we can spawn in the star, which can be obtained by using a teleport area on this bridge and sliding down this slanted hill. Zero button presses. I tried to grab wall kicks will work next, and for this one you could actually climb up this area by frame walking. If you don't know what frame walking is, it's when you're able to climb up slopes by continuously moving in a direction on the joystick and then letting go of the stick. Anyways, we can slide down this hill to gain enough height and speed to slide onto this spin drift. And since we have an insane amount of momentum, we can bounce off the mountain and the invisible wall outside of the mountain so we can keep using our initial momentum and grab the star with zero button presses. The next stars I tried to obtain was the 100 coin and 8 red coin stars. You can grab more than half the coins needed for the 100 coin star by replaying the slide, and the red coins aren't that difficult either. The one I had the hardest time on was this one that's kind of stuck inside of this pocket, but we can grab it without any issues if we grab one of the nearby ledges. The 100th coin I collected spawned a star that spawned right next to this slope making it pretty easy to grab. We had to go through two text boxes to progress though. The star for the red coins wasn't too difficult to grab either, but I decided to do it in the coolest way possible. Zero button presses were needed. I don't think there's any more stars that we can grab for free in Cool Cool Mountain, so I thought we should probably try out Princess Peach's secret slide. The first star I grabbed from here has a slide down this slide in under 21 seconds, and I did this pretty easily. The star does spawn just above our heads though, so we're going to have to press A one time. There's also a second star for this slide that we can grab pretty easily, but it does cost two button presses. We're at nine stars currently, so I think it might be time to face off against Bowser in the Dark World. This level starts off with us pretty much just walking in a straight line until we reach this slant. There are platforms right beside this slanted area that we'll need to get onto in order to progress, but unfortunately I was un able to get on the moving platforms without jumping, so I did have to press A one time. The next problematic area requires us to jump once again to get on top of this platform with the moving block in the middle of it. The final section has a side flip to grab onto this edge, and then we'll need to climb up this slope that for some reason is unwalkable, meaning we have to use two jumps to climb up the stairs and one jump to get inside the pipe. This pipe brings us to our first Bowser battle, and Bowser gives us three text boxes the second we touch the ground. This fight wasn't too difficult, but I was disappointed when I found out you can't grab Bowser and defeat him by just simply bringing him to a bomb. You actually have to release him yourself to defeat him, which does take two button presses. After defeating him, you'll need to go through three more text boxes, and then we can claim our first key of the game. After collecting the first key, we can gain access to the bottom floor of the castle where we can visit Hazy Maze Cave, not you, Lethal Lava Land and Shifting Sandland. Lethal Lava Land was the first area I wanted to go to, and we can just barely jump into the painting with one jump. I decided to try out the 100 coin and 8 red coin stars just to get out of the way, and they were both surprisingly easy to complete. All I really had to do was at least create a decent enough route that I could use to grab the 100 required coins, and I pretty much went from the bottom left around to the top right, then I went back to the left side of the map. The 100 coin star was easy to grab, and the red coin star was also pretty easy to grab. Zero buttons needed. Boil the big bully and bully the bullies were the next stars I tried to complete, and they were both pretty much the same exact thing. Zero button presses were needed. The final star I wanted to grab from Lethal Lava Land was Red Hot Log Rolling, and this was just easy, I don't really have to say anything else about it. I tried out some stars from Shifting Sandland, and shining atop the pyramid was pretty easy. In the Talons of the Big Bird requires a precise fire bounce from a shy guy, but it was pretty doable. I wanted to attempt the 8 red coins, but we couldn't really do so since we would have to get one of the stars from the inside of the pyramid to unlock a crucial item for that star, and it would obviously cost us a button press, so that's why I'm not gonna do it. I decided to go over some earlier levels that I might have missed, which somehow led me to Jolly Rock 
Roger Bay. You might be thinking that it's a terrible choice to go to Jolly Roger Bay, but something I didn't even think about until I was actually playing the level was that you could actually carry over your A press from the menu to swim in the water free of charge. I decided to grab Blast to the Stone Pillar, but it does unfortunately require one button to obtain. Know what star also requires one button to obtain? The Secret Aquarium's red coins for some reason doesn't let you carry an A press into the level, so it does cost one button press. But it's pretty optimal since you don't even get a star selection screen when you enter. I decided to try out the Treasure of the Ocean Cave, and it was pretty easy, but it did cost us two jumps, which I really didn't want to use, but I did end up using them. I tried out the first star from this level next, and getting inside the ship was pretty simple, but we did have to press A one time to swim again while in the ship for whatever reason. Reason. Solving the puzzle was as easy as it should have been, and swimming to the top wasn't difficult either, although we did have to framewalk a bit to actually reach the top platform. We needed to jump one time to break the box containing the star, and I tried to framewalk up some of these walls to see if I could just barely grab the star whenever I fell, but I didn't have much luck with that unfortunately. Three buttons were needed. I don't know why I played such a big ticket level so early on, but hopefully it was worth it. After this star, I realized I forgot a star or two from Cool Cool Mountain. So I decided to play Lil Penguin Lost, but I did have to go through one button to pick up the penguin and two text boxes after bringing the penguin to the mother. The star was as easy as jumping off this cliff and falling a few times until I got lucky. I also tried to grab the first MIPS star since we were well over 15 stars. And yes, I know I'm doing these levels in like the weirdest order imaginable, but this is kind of how I collected the stars in this run. Four button presses were needed. Elevator tour in the volcano was the next star. I wanted to grab it and it took us three button presses to complete. I went back to Shifting Sandland to grab the inside of the Ancient Pyramid, and it took one button press. And since we finished that star, we were able to go back to the 8 red coins, which required very precise movements on Shy Guys and careful use of these whirlwinds, which was the item that was unlocked in the last star. Zero buttons needed. I went over to Hazy Maze Cave next, and I don't know why, but for some reason I decided to grab this star that costs five button presses. Trust me though, it is unfortunately worth it, especially since we've pretty much ran out of stars that take no button presses. The second star I decided to grab costs two button presses. One to jump over this pit, and another to get on top of this elevator that can help us with clipping through the ground and grabbing the star. The next star I wanted to grab required five more button presses, unfortunately, but once again we kind of needed it. I remembered we still needed to unlock the wing cap, so for our 30th star, I decided I should start going for the wing cap star, which requires us to use the camera to get into the level. But as I said in the intro, it doesn't matter if we move the camera, I just will try not to use it. We get hit with three text boxes upon entering this level, but we don't have to use any button presses after that. Since we have 30 stars now, we can finally reach our second Bowser level, but it seems to be behind this wall leading to Dire Dire Docks. So we're going to have to check out that area first. Just like Jolly Roger Bay, our A press can carry over to allow us to swim completely free of charge. But we do run into a little bit of a problem shortly after we reach this submarine, since we kind of need to get on top of it to actually reach the star. I pushed this button to create some blocks, and I jumped twice to get on top of the submarine. The star also required a jump. After this star, we'll gain access to Bowser in the Fire Sea, and this level for some reason starts out without anything pressable. We don't have to go through a star selection screen or any text boxes. Anyways, this first area was pretty easy to damage boost through, but the end of this area does contain a pole that we'll need to jump off of. The rest of this level was pretty easy to navigate through, since they gave us plenty of coins and healing hearts. The Bowser fight is pretty much the exact same as last time. Go through the three text boxes, grab and let go of his tail, and then go through three more text boxes to finally grab our second key of the game. After grabbing this key, we get to unlock the door to the upstairs section of the castle, which means we have to grab 40 more stars. I decided to grab a few stars from Snowman's Land, and these were definitely interesting to collect. Chill with the Bully is pretty much just like two of the stars from Lethal Lava Land, and it requires zero buttons. Snowman's Big Head requires a really interesting trick where you slowly move this money bags over to this block that contains a shell. After it's close enough, you can clone the money bags a whole bunch by leaving and entering their radius multiple times. Once you have an okay amount of money bags, you can bounce on top of them, break this box, and grab the shell. This shell will allow us to manipulate a nearby fly guy into lunging closer to the snowman's head. We actually get a really cool view of how this happens also. 
After the fly guy is in its spot, we're able to gain hyperspeed from the mountain and reach one of the top platforms of the snowman. The fly guy can help us with the rest. Zero buttons were needed. You could do the money bags trick and go into hyperspeed for in the deep freeze. And for Whirl from the Freezing Pond, you can do the money bags trick again, but with a short twist. And the 100 coins and 8 red coin stars requires us to clone some money bags. Nothing much needs to be said for the 8 red coins since you can just walk into most of them. Zero buttons were needed for both of them. I don't believe there are any more stars we can actually grab for this level, so I decided to try out Wet Dry World, which has only one really easy star that doesn't require us to use any buttons. Tall Tall Mountains 8 Red Coins were up next on the list, and we can grab the first few by walking off the edge and using this conveniently placed gust of wind. You can also manipulate this fly guy into going under the mushrooms so we can bounce off of it at a later time once we gain enough speed from using this gust of wind. This is really precise, and I don't even think a human can do anything even close to this. Anyways, this star does require zero button presses, so it's definitely a great star to grab, even if it's not physically possible. Breathtaking view from the bridge requires a small bit of climbing, but it's nothing we can't do. Blast to the Lonely Mushroom has us bounce on this fly guy to reach this mushroom, and scale the mountain only requires one jump at the very end. Mysterious Mountainside should have been zero button presses, but I decided to collect the 100 coin star along with it, which requires one button press to enter the slide, one jump to grab the star, and two menu presses to get through these text boxes. You'll also need to jump once to grab the main star we're going for. I tried out some levels in Tiny Huge Island next, and plucking the piranha flower requires you to grab this Koopa shell so you can defeat all these piranha plants. If you time your moves correctly, you can defeat the final plant while it spits out fire, allowing you to grab the star with zero button presses. I also mixed in the 100 coin star for this, but I'm not sure if you can still use the fire trick since we barely have enough coins to actually save up for the star. So pluck the piranha flower will actually cost us one button press. Five itty bitty secrets was another star I went for, and all we really had to do was grab a shell on the big island so we can reach this pipe. We do this since we would have been stuck on the small island spawn. Anyways, we can grab the hidden secrets by damage boosting towards them or just by walking over them. Zero buttons needed. After this star, I decided to head back to Jolly Roger Bay because for some reason I forgot a really important star that might just require zero buttons. This star was Can the Eel Come Out to Play, and this star wasn't too difficult, but I did almost drown while playing. I also noticed that there were some stars that we can grab in Dire Dire Docks, and I don't know why I never thought of coming back to this level. But the Manta Rays Award and Chests in the Current were both possible to grab with zero button presses, even though the Chest Star was pretty difficult to play since we kept getting pulled in by the current. Since we are at 50 stars now, we are able to reach the final door that will lead us to stars. I tried to grab the star Get a Hand from TikTok Clock, and this was pretty interesting. You can climb up these spinning platforms to reach the top half of this level, and while we're up here, we can actually use the fire from this nearby enemy to get on top of the clock's hand. This hand will spin over to the star, but unfortunately we're unable to grab the star since it's just barely higher than us. There is a pendulum directly under us though, but it doesn't seem to be of any help to us. Yet. We can actually wait for this pendulum to swing around for quite a while, and by waiting for it, the pendulum will actually start to swing higher than normal. This is super lucky, but we can actually manipulate the RNG by simply walking back and forth. The pendulum can push you into the star after that. Zero buttons needed. The 8 red coins for this level can also be completed without any button presses, but it does require some insanely precise movements on these spinning platforms. Now we are already at the point where we're going to need to backtrack now. So I decided to go back to Dire Dire Docks for a very interesting star. In this game, you can sometimes replace items you're carrying. This includes items like the Koopa shells since you can't normally hold it in your hands. So when you're holding a Koopa shell, you can swim up to the surface and press B the second you leave the water, and you'll be able to carry it. If you start swimming to the main area of the level, you'll realize that your Koopa shell magically changes into a random item around the area. If you keep going back and forth through where these two zones load in, you'll eventually be holding onto a star which you can easily collect by letting go of the shell. Three buttons were needed. We only have a few more stars left, and they aren't very complicated either, so I'm going to quickly skim over them now. Mip's second star was pretty easy to grab, we needed to jump once and punch once as well. Tall Tall Mountain's Monkey Cage star required one gameplay button press. I also grabbed Toad stars 1, 2, and 3, which all needed one jump and a B press to talk to Toad. Rolling into the cage was a star that takes three button presses, and we can reach it by standing on the clock hand and wall jumping a few times. Way back in Womp's Fortress, we can collect the 100 coin star 
start by skipping past at least one of these coins, sliding over this piranha plant, ground pounding this blue coin switch, and frame walking up this wall to just barely reach these coins. After that we can grab our final red coin and our 100th coin. Then we can get the 100 coin star and the red coin star in that order. Pretty easy. Pyramid puzzle requires us to open up the pyramid, drop down to grab some coins, and collect this star with four button presses. Navigating the toxic maze has us fall down this hole, run through this maze, and side flip onto this pocket in the wall. After that, we can go up to this elevator and grab the star with three button presses. Bob on Battlefield 8 red coins costs four button presses, but three might be possible if you can slide down this slope and barely gain enough height to grab this coin. I unfortunately was not able to do so. Jolly Roger Bay's 8 red coins were pretty easy to grab, and one of them requires a jump to reach this pole. Almost all the other ones can be collected from the mouth of a clam. I paired the 100 coin star with this one, and that required two button presses to ground pound this blue coin switch, one side flip to reach this area that will lead us to the ship that has the final three red coins. The coins were pretty easy to grab since the ship sways high enough for us to walk straight into. We can frame walk to the top of the ship to grab the 100 coin star, but we do have to jump one time to grab the red coin star. The Great Penguin Race requires two text boxes at the beginning, and two more at the end. We can just walk into the star to grab it. Snowman's Lost His Head has three text boxes at the beginning, and two at the end. We can fall off the mountain to grab the star. Express Elevators Hurry Up has us get launched by these heave hose, and then we'll have to jump three times to reach this platform. After breaking this box and jumping onto the platform we dragged down, we can walk into the star with five button presses. For our last star, I decided to grab Top of the Town, and for this we'll need to jump twice at the beginning, get super lucky with the chuck you throw, and then jump to this yellow box and grab the star with five button presses. Now that we're at 70 stars, we have to go through one more text box that tells us that we're able to fight Bowser. To get into the door where our final level is, we'll need to side flip twice to get up these stairs, and then jump one time to get into this hole. The first section of this final level requires not one, not two, but three jumps just to get past the first obstacle. Thankfully, this next section with the spinning platform doesn't require us to jump. Shortly after the spinning platform, we run into a problem that's just barely out of our reach, so we're going to have to jump to reach this area. There are some spinning platforms afterwards, and I feel like I might be able to grab onto one of them, but I was just barely unable to grab onto them. So that's going to be another jump. We also need to side flip once to get on top of this area, and then jump once more to reach this slope that we can frame walk up. Not sure why this slope is walkable when the one from Bowser in the Dark World isn't, but anyways, this section after that has a moving platform that has a lot of roadblocks in the middle of its path. So we're going to have to jump one, two, three, four, five, six times. I feel like it might be possible to bring that number down, but this was the absolute best that I could pull off. The best I could do for this final section was one, two, three, four, five, and once again, six jumps. And after those, we're going to have to fight Bowser like we normally would. But this time, instead of just throwing him one time, we have to throw him three times. So that's going to be yet another six button presses to defeat Bowser for the final time. After he is defeated, we will need to go through our final four text boxes, and then grab the final star with one final jump. We just beat Super Mario 64 while using the least amount of button presses possible. Our final number for how many times we pressed a button during gameplay was 176. And with our many button presses added in, we get a total score of 391 button presses. If you liked this video, make sure you press the like button. And if I missed something, or if you just have something to say, comment down below. If this run can get a significantly lower number of button presses, I'll definitely pin the link to whatever video shows the new total. And I have a feeling that this challenge can definitely be improved by a lot. Anyways, thanks for watching, and yeah, that's all I got.